voice. Yeah, yeah. So welcome, welcome to the Hannah Judson yes. Beat. Oh, yay. So this is a conversation that I've been having um, for about two months with various friends of mine um, who are in the arts in one in one form or another. And I was really happy that you agreed to to join on and to cheers <laughs> and to um, offer to give us a little bit of a, a an update from Tokyo. So how are hey, you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I've been doing well. Super busy. Super busy. Um, so what have you been up to during during these these this weird year? This whole year? Yeah, what have you been up to lately? Um this whole year, yes, of course, we're under corona covid uh, situation. So yeah. things have changed actually. I've been at home most of the time now. But um so it changed. I don't go out and do music or anything. Yeah. And also I'm doing like a cooking class. Mm -hmm. for, um, but I can't do it. So everything's just like blocked, you know, yeah. since it is spring. But then um, maybe one or, or two months, I was being in a cave, you know, wondering what to do. Yeah. And I just start doing like little things like um taking a video and uh making a music at home by myself yeah and they start doing many like online sort of communication yeah to make music and everything um then it was it was actually good actually i'm making um I, I just made the album last year but um and I was thinking to release them this year, uh -huh. but because of these things happen, it postponed. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm thinking in a totally different idea, I'm going to release the album like virtually. Yeah, so t tell me about that. What are you thinking? What What's the plan for the virtual release? Well, um, I think instead of having show, on uh in a actual place yeah I'm thinking like just to make a video and uh, through the internet yeah um i have to uh, do a concert yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah. i've been thinking the very same things because in march i released a record i released my uh -huh. record stingray um right. and i and then we had a lockdown and just like you, I was in, it was initially really foggy at first. Mm. Like it was not easy to keep moving, mm. um, moving forward. So we've got a question from Andre Mook and he's asking, what musical instruments do you play? I play, I make music with piano. Mm -hmm. Also I make in a computer, I'm sort of programming. And we met, a year ago in Berlin, Momoko mm -hmm. and I met because we were both part of a project um, from Anton Records um, mm -hmm. where we had been given parameters to compose. A, 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 everybody had been given the same parameters for a composition and then we got together for this record release party. And at the, can you talk about what you were playing at that record release party? Uh, record release party, uh, I brought my laptop and I brought my kita. Your kita, right? Yeah and a play and sync. It's a yeah. very simple set. Mm. Yeah, I thought that the, the guitar was great. It was <laughs> it was really, it was it was fun. It was great to watch you play it. So, so that event, which was really only a year ago, seems yes, like, that was it like, seems like October? it was in October, mm. October last year. That seems like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. Long time. So, so um, after you began to get out of the difficult moment in the in the lockdown, what did you begin to do specifically? Um, to creativity, you mean? Yeah. Um, basically, nothing has changed, but my mind has changed. Yeah. Um, so instead of thinking I have to do a show outside, 
I'm kind of practicing myself how to take a video yeah. and how to take a picture. So um, besides my um, instrument of making music in a computer, I start learning how to edit a video. Yes. Also, I bought a lot of lighting system. Yes. <laughs> Today I'm doing my, like in my friend's place, I'm talking, but at home, I bought like two or three, like, you know, lights. Yes. And uh, sound system also. I bought like many uh, microphones, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm learning that kind of process a lot. Yeah, I think it's so interesting. Everything you've said, I'm like, yes, me too, me too. Mm -hmm. And I think that individual artists, more than ever, we are responsible for our, our own production company. You have to, mm -hmm. and, and for communicating through video and communicating mm -hmm. through images, I agree with everything you said. I mean, those were always tools we had, but but when it becomes your doorway or it becomes your stage, you really have to know how, how it works. Yes. So we have another question for you from Andre. Do you collaborate with other musicians? Collaborate, yes. Um, actually, like uh, this album, I'm um, trying to put it out maybe hopefully this year or next year earlier. Um, I have my not sort of band. I'm a solo artist, but I have like a person who play guitar and drums. And yeah, I, I work with them to make music. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I just posted to the chat all of your socials. So mm -hmm. your your Instagram, YouTube, um, Facebook. Is there any place you would like people to go where they can see your work? Uh, my work, yeah. Um, I, I, I use an, um, Instagram a lot now. Yeah. Um, so you can visit my uh, Instagram. Like just last week, I had uh, my first live streaming. Um, I did from in, from Instagram. Yeah, from Instagram. It actually um, and uh, this uh, last week I had uh, this virtual art book fair in uh -huh. Tokyo. Like every year, I I made, I'm doing like a Tokyo art book fair. So that is like a, a big uh, in the museum place. We have we bring so many like uh, CDs and books and sell. It's like a fair, you know, it's like a market. But this year we couldn't do that because you know COVID. So we had like a virtual uh, place. So everyone going to the computer, and it's like a video game. You can walk around and talk. Oh, to cool. Yeah, so we have like a shop, little shop. It's like a little booth. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting there and talk to people who come in and buy my stuff. So we had like a Zoom camera. Mm -hmm. So we talk to the customer. And also at the same time, I open the Instagram. So we're going to do the live show. Okay, and good. And the usual live show, you know, you, you do at stage or like this kind of thing. I'm at home and talk, but yeah. I actually travel to like a different place, uh, which is like uh, near Tokyo. Uh -huh. I travel and like from there I did the live streaming. So it's like virtual, but in reality, I go travel and do something. Oh, I love it. Like, so what, what what kind of space did you go to? I had, um, it's kind of like an Airbnb uh -huh. hotel. Uh -huh. And um, I was having a party with other group. And then while I've been having a party, I do the live stream at the same time in that place. Okay. So I'm, I'm singing to people who, who gather the place. And at the same time, I talk to the um, through the uh, live streaming into Instagram and Zoom at the same time. So it's it's kind of strange. It's, it's not like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication. It's, right. So, yeah. It's a very, very strange feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. And so while you were performing, were people, were you able to see comments? People were commenting yeah. and you could talk to them that way? 
Yes, yeah. I can see yeah. the comments. Yeah. Also, I can see here the audience, in, in, like in front of me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, was it was the technology distracting, or did it add to your sense of accomplishment? And well, technology, yes. Like like today, you know, sometimes yeah. like yeah. audio problem happens, and the Wi-Fi network stops, and yeah. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Instead yeah. of having real show, like a real show, also you have like sound program or many things. So it's a, it's different kind of you know uh, hard uh, moment I have, but, but it's fun at the same time. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's incredible just to to sort of be on the journey with technology because it is always evolving, and so you just have to you have to know that you can't master it. You just have to surf it. You know. I know. I, so I think I like uh, in my career, I'm used to bringing my uh, laptop or my guitar or you know anything. I travel with instruments and play. You know, that's things I used to it. But now I have to bring my computer and also like tripods and you know yeah, like different I, kind of tools. Exactly. Yeah. The tools for making the making the portal for yeah. people to to join you. Mm. You also cook and you have yes. a cooking class. Yes. So, yes. so can you tell me about that? Uh cooking class, I, I of course I did uh, in Tokyo and Osaka. I was having a class, just, you know, as the usual cooking class. Uh -huh. But since this uh, um, COVID-19 happens, it everything stopped. So I had the one time I tried uh, an internet cooking class I did. Yeah. Did, yeah. How, did, how did that go? That was, first one was very strange. I in my studio, I cook, yeah. and in Osaka studio, some people gather. Oh. So it's like a remote uh, yeah. teacher, and people are watching me talking and cooking in a big screen. Oh wow! In a different venue in Osaka, <laughs> and do it at the same time. Very very strange. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so normally when you're when you're cooking, you have people with you. Yes. So you're talking and you they yes. can smell and they can yeah. Yes. So, yeah. It's like a remote. And... So who who taught you to cook? Oh, about cooking? Mm -hmm. uh, no, nobody taught me. I used to live in Thailand for a long time, mm -hmm. about eight years. Mm -hmm. So while there I know the taste. Yeah. So, I just learned myself. Yeah, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. And so I was also going to ask you about about your background as an artist. Did you go to art school, and did you always know you were an artist? Did you start from the beginning, or is it something you got into later? Um, yeah, I went to art school in San Francisco. Oh, and that's that right. time I was in like a visual art, like mm -hmm. doing uh, videos and performance art, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then um, I didn't go to like a sort of fine art uh, world. I didn't do the visual art. So I was just, but I was, I was sort of inspired by all those performance artists or happening artists. Mm -hmm. um, Especially, I was very um, inspired by like Andy Warhol, you know, yeah. in the sixties. Like strange people get together and have a party, but the form itself is kind of art. That kind of, you know. Uh, uh, so, I was always looking for that kind of lifestyle or just be in the uh, scene and stuff. So I was not looking for just to be like a band band or artist. Yeah. I was always looking for a scene. Yeah. And when I started uh, mu music in in Bangkok, it was Bangkok was um, uh, compared to Tokyo, New York. It's it's kind of sixties or seventies in Tokyo. It's just. Okay. It's it's the same when it starts, you know. 
Okay. So, so I had really, uh, I was there in a very, very good time. And I was yeah. there to start the band and in a kind of art form or something. But then I, I, I started interested in later on, I, I'm interested in, in it. I was into in like a songwriting. Okay. Than just performing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. And so can you tell me your geography? <clears throat> it was like Tokyo, San Francisco, Bangkok, Thailand, Tokyo, or what was your circuit? Oh, so I grew up in Japan and then I went to San Francisco when I was a, a university student. Mm -hmm. Then after I graduate, I moved to Thailand and then now Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. And okay, that's that's excellent. And so in Tokyo, do you find that Andy Warhol scene? Is there yes. is, is there a vibrant community for you? No. no. Yeah. And no. Tokyo is like no, it's it's more like uh Tokyo is uh it's not like a rare thing. Everything's more mature. Yeah. Uh, that's how I felt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so are you doing things to sort of make your own scene? Well, you know, I didn't actually. I what I felt in Tokyo is like there's no room I can fit in or I can start to my scene. So it was kind of difficult for me. Yeah, um, to fit in this uh, scene. Yeah. So so I couldn't I couldn't be like I don't know what is my group or what kind of thing I will have to start it. So I was like, kind of um, alone. I I feel so. And I have friends. Yeah. I, I don't find uh, something underground scene I, I couldn't find it I, I found some friends who do music together mm -hmm. but for me I couldn't find like a very very original a right. small scene or I couldn't find that's true is is Tokyo conservative or is it you said it was sort of mature is it mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. Is it is it a uh, is it a city that has answered its own question, and so it's not a maybe that's too um, metaphorical. Well, yeah, conservative. Yeah, I could say uh, what I meant. Mature is like mm, everything. It seems like everything happened already. Yeah, that's how I feel. So if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Um, now, I, I don't. Last year, actually, when I went to Berlin and I had a concert with you and everything, yeah. I was thinking maybe this year I could move to Berlin. Yeah. I was thinking that was my plan. And maybe not for the whole uh, time, but maybe I can live Berlin like one or two months or something. Yeah, and do some communication and exchange work, but it's stopped you know, because of yeah. the pandemic. So, um, so now I think my my idea of uh, everything that I did changed, and I don't have to go anywhere actually. Yeah, I can stay here, and it's connected to everywhere. And I can't move, but you know I can communicate in this kind of new way. <laughs> exactly. I, don't know, I, I hear you. It's so weird. No, you you I explained it perfectly. So strange. But actually, I'm quite excited now. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I, cool. Because it's completely new. This whole situation. Yeah. So compared yeah. to. Everything's happened already in Tokyo. Uh, I've seen this, I've seen that, and everybody's kind of there's no room. That's that's how I felt. There's no real place. Uh, there's no real underground. That's how, how I felt. Yeah, yeah. Tokyo. But now it seems like uh, I I just moved to a new town, which you know 
nothing is built yet. Yeah, yes. In the oh. digital world, there's no scene yet, you know, and I'm start, I just started something. That's how yeah. I feel. feel. Yeah. So, so I, I'm excited. I, I hear you. I really love what you're saying about that. So we've got another question for you. Do you have anywhere which you consider home? Sorry, can you say it again? Yeah, do you have anywhere you consider home? Do you have a, a sense of home? Sense of home? Mm, don't know. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, do you consider Tokyo your home? Ah, not yet. So how much time do you think it will take? Um, I don't know. But um, when I was in Thailand, it took me like five years yeah. to get used to it. In five yeah. years, exact time I started the band. Yeah. But in Tokyo, I was wondering, and it's been like now nine years or ten years, and now I feel like I want I can do something, my creation yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So I think Tokyo takes time more double double okay <laughs> tokyo takes time noted <laughs> yes yeah. it's interesting people say in, if you want to be a new yorker you have to live there like seven years and stuff like that mm. but i i think tokyo 10 years <laughs> okay yeah that's interesting when I was in Berlin just like a year ago, a year and a month ago, like you, I also felt like I could live here. I, I felt totally at home in Berlin. I felt like there was space for me. I could meet my mm -hmm. people. I could do what I needed to do. I felt like Berlin, when, when I was in Berlin, I thought, okay, I found my place. Mm -hmm. And now, but but like you, it would be great to go like two months a year, just have Berlin as a piece, a piece of the, uh, mm -hmm of the environment, but I thought Berlin was mm. great. I, yeah, I, was, I really like the vibes in Berlin. I wish I could yeah. go there. Yeah. So yeah. you're from um, America? You, you yeah, I'm American, but I live in France. I've lived in France for about 15 years. Uh -huh. And and I'm also French citizen, so. Oh, okay. So where yeah. are you now? Actually? So I am in a little village just outside of Paris. Um, the village is on the Seine River, and it's very, very quiet, uh -huh. and it's very much in the uh -huh. countryside, but close to the city. So that's where we've been for the whole pandemic, and it's been uh -huh. great because it's been really quiet. But uh -huh. we've been in a really serious lockdown, and in fact, yesterday, the lockdown lifted a little bit. So uh -huh. we can now go outside for three hours, and we uh -huh. can go for... 20 kilometers, but before it was one hour, one kilometer a day. Oh. So we were really, really locked down. So, so basically, how, you, how do you do the music? Like that? From here? Mm -hmm. So this past year, my journey has been very similar to yours of like being inside and having to really fi figure out the technology for myself, mm. figure out the new scene, figure out how to reach out, create community. Um, from 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 a distance mm -hmm. um but normally i've got normally my routine is that i write my own songs and i've got musicians here i work with mm -hmm. and then in the summer i go to california and i record and i've got musicians in california that i work with and then i come back here so i've got a nor in a normal year i've got uh more more traveling and more circles and and figure eights around the earth but not this year. Yeah. So I've got another question from you from Andre. He asks so to you, so home is where your scene is rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you mean? So, sorry. So, so he's he's uh, riffing on the idea of home and, and you know what what makes you feel at home. And so he's asking you, is the most important thing what makes you feel at home is the scene. That you have, that you find yourself in, mm, home, to feel mm. like home. Mm. Mm, I never think about it. <laughs> where my home is. 
Yeah. Uh, it's strange. Um, I don't know. I never thought of it. Mm, but um, one thing about my creation, since I moved in Tokyo, I start speaking Japanese again, <laughs> Japanese language. Uh -huh. And I like... Um, I like music, but I like love like words. Yeah, uh, as much as I do like music. Yeah, and in Japan I can enjoy the wording. Yeah. Like since I moved here in Japan, I start doing like a haiku. <laughs> oh, cool! Haiku poetry, and this is something I can do only in Japan. Yeah because uh, it's related to um, uh, haiku as a rule. You have to use certain words uh, in a certain season. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so in spring, there's a words you have to use it, like this type of flower, or even like when you say snow, that means uh, it's, a, it's a word from winter and that's an easier one, but it's it's there's many many like mask or something. Mask is like a winter word or something. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of thing, things related to Japanese season, mm -hmm. I can really enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a privilege I can do as a creation because yeah. I'm in Japan and I'm Japanese and I'm yeah. I enjoy that the localness. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Before I was like really looking for like I want to be the front boys. You know, I can I can go anywhere international. That was I was looking for. Mm -hmm. But now I'm enjoying the local uh, thing. Yeah. Oh, that's that's neat. Mm -hmm. So when you were in San Francisco, did you feel at home there? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, I was when I was in San Francisco, I couldn't speak much English either. Okay. So I was totally like a traveler there, I think. I was okay. like a stranger. That's how yeah. I felt. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in when I was in Thailand too. Mm -hmm. Also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've also spent fairly large chunks of my life in places where I am a foreigner. And I think it's a, definitely something that gives that it is a gift to have to, to have to not just take things for granted and to have to figure things out and learn new words and to be constantly sort of working towards understanding. Um, and you can't take anything for granted, but it certainly is also a gift when you're at home. And you can just you can just work in the haiku of the season, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So so what are your very what are you gonna do tomorrow? What are your next plans? Oh, next plan. Mm -hmm. Um not many things. I, I, things I have to do, right? Uh, I have to um, finish my zinc. I just made a, for the book fair, I made my zine. So I have to do the, what do you call? I, I have a printed uh, papers. So I have to like uh, make a book. My, bind my it? Hand. You have to bind it? Yeah. I have to Excellent. Bind it. Cool. That's what I have to do tomorrow. Okay. And uh, send it to everyone. Oh, That's cool. What I have to do. Yeah, it's a new thing too. So, what is what, to what like kind of content? Yeah. What is in your so zine? Then I sell things at the booths. So now I'm learning a new thing too, <laughs> like a post. Oh, that's like posting things. Mm. Cool. Yeah. So one one um one final question. Um, if you were if you were a a if you what is your superpower? Superpower. Yeah, what's your superpower? <laughs> what do you mean? So if you were a, if you were like a Wonder Woman or if you were Superman or whatever, what superpower do you have? <laughs> do I have a superpower? You, you do. Really? I don't know. Mm, 
I if I have a superpower,、mm-hmm. I feel like、uh, pe- when I'm with people, I think I'm a good、um, rather than being a good talker, I'm good at listening.、Uh-huh. So even I don't ask anything, people start talking to me about their life and their thoughts. So I think I, I I'm. I have a power for that. Excellent. Yeah. So your superpower is listening, but it's not just li- it's not just hearing. It's being being someone who can hear and listen and take it in and understand. Yeah. Or try to make people want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People, I think you know people. People need to talk. People have things they need、yeah. to say, and so many things that people need to say go unsaid. So I think being a being a listener, a compassionate listener, is a great superpower. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening. It looks like you were having fun and you had the champagne flowing. And this is for taking time to talk to me. This was a really great conversation. I love、yes. talking to you. Very, very nice to talk to you. Yeah, it was really great to hear a little bit about、yeah. what's going on in Tokyo and just how you've been this year, how you've been managing it. And I can relate to so much of what you said. It was really terrific. Yeah. So. You know, do music with you in in Berlin. I know. <laughs> next year, next year. So. Yeah. But so we'll. Yeah, but I I I think I have a show online、uh, this year or early early next year.、Mm-hmm. So in that time, I want to do the interactive talk show or live show. Uh-huh. So、I hope that I see you there. Oh, definitely, definitely.、Yeah. Let me、yeah. know. Be posted. Well, it was wonderful to sort of get to hang out with you.、Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, and definitely please keep in touch.、Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you guys, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Andre, and the rest who have dropped in for our conversation. I'm going to be back next week with Muse Fest. We're not going to do a live、um, a live conversation, and then I'm going to take some time in December to organize th- this project a little bit more. And I've got guests lined up for January, and it's going to be back on track starting January 2021. 2021. <laughs> so thank you, guys. See you later. See you later.